Welcome to The Sound of Wishes. I'm Cassandra Mulcahy, your host and creatress. I'm a board-certified music therapist with a passion to create harmony, embrace play, and redefine health. I'm here to share wellness musings, inspirations, and techniques to help you embrace your inner child. Please be aware that this podcast is not meant to be a substitute or replacement for therapy. Thank you for tuning into this community and be ready to tune up and create more music magic in your heart. Hi loves, this is Cassandra and welcome to The Sound of Wishes. So this is our first share of 2020. Welcome to the new decade, the new year, the new everything. Um, It's February 11th right now as I'm recording this. We had a beautiful full moon last night. And um, I've been enjoying a very mild winter here in New England. Please excuse my dog noises in the background. You might hear a little bit of her drinking some water and nursing herself. Um, but today I'd like to share a little bit about heart harmony. Um, we're going to explore our, our heart spaces today. We're going to explore how to nourish them from an energetic and music perspective. We're going to explore calling things in, which I feel like is so potent and pertinent this time of the year. Um, This time of the year, you know, we're recovering from the dark season where our nights are still so much longer than our days. And, And it's a great period of rest for us. But as we dethaw from the winter, as we dethaw from the rest... I encourage all of us to take this time and this moment to explore what it is that you're calling in and calling on and bringing into your field, into your energy, and into the music of your experience and your body as we recover from the darkness. What do we want to return with the light? What do we want to invite in? What do we want to be held accountable for? What do we want to explore in our integrity? And what do we want to invite more of into our lives? So we're going to begin with a little bit of a heart-centered meditation. So please begin by checking in with the rhythm of your body right now. Check in with the rhythm of your breath. That's always the most, the easiest and the most powerful thing to recognize. Notice if your breath is deep or shallow. If there's a space in between your in-breath and out-breath. Is there a rhythm? that your breath makes is it even is your in breath and out breath staggered are they the same duration the same length is your breath loud is it soft and then from there notice the rhythm of your heart space maybe you can feel it under your hand Maybe you can feel its resonance through one of your pulse points. Maybe there's a bit of pain somewhere. You can feel the thumping of your heart somewhere in your body. Notice the rhythm and the volume of your thoughts. And allow yourself to consciously turn those down. I like to imagine an imaginary, imagine an imaginary volume knob somewhere 
or we can turn down the tempo for a moment. This is really when we allow ourselves that space and that silence. Then we make space for the music of other things in our lives. So invite yourself to do that right now. Invite yourself to make space for the exploration of your heart's rhythm. And maybe the consideration of the expansion of that heart space. Consideration of the increase in volume of that heart space. Today we're going to tune in and see if we can increase the volume of what our needs are, our desires. And we're going to explore this concept of self-care. I had a patient um, who came in with this really beautiful, you know, culturally reflexive um, interpretation of self-care. Self-care, I feel like, is something that um, we talk about a lot. It's important if we care for other people to, to nourish ourselves foremost, because if we walk around with an empty bank account and we hand out <laughs> dollars to everyone or we keep writing checks to, um, to people in need, then we are going to end up more in debt in our bank account. And the same thing goes with our heart space, that if we walk around and we see people who are in need of our time, of our energy, people who are in need of, of our patience, of our compassion, and we don't take that time to replenish our heart space, if we don't take time to replenish our bank account, then we end up in a dangerous place financially. And the same thing can happen with our heart space. If we don't replenish things that are valuable to our heart, if we don't um, give ourselves enough of that heart medicine every day, if we don't give ourselves enough of that heart medicine every day, then we become impoverished in our heart space. And our heart is a very, very important rhythm for us to maintain in our bodies because it's one of the driving forces. Without rhythm of our heart, we have no warmth in our body. We have no oxygen or fuel for our body. We have no oxygen or fuel for our brains. And we can put ourselves in, in a dangerous spot. So, self-care. In the world, in the media, and magazines on the shelf, we see more and more about self-care. And I love this, this phrasing of, of self-loving. But ways that we can improve our relationship with our heart are so important. So we've got, you know, the three basic categories of, of heart space. We have to take care of ourselves um, in our body, through proper nutrition, through ways and foods that make us healthy. We've got to take care of our body and physical exercise. We've got to take care of our our um, our heart in, in so many ways, making sure if the doctor says that you need medicine, getting the right medicine to help your body or your mind function at its optimal level. Um, then we have the self-care aspect of, um, of the mind, which is making sure that you are, um, you're fueling your heart space with, with things that are enriching to you on a, on a cognitive level, on a social level, making sure that you get enough time with friends and family, making sure that you get enough time with people who um, captivate your mind, making sure you get daily doses of education of things that you love, looking into researching things that bring you happiness, maybe an old pastime that you've forgotten. Um, you know, I also think of mind as like a sense of play. Are we getting enough play time? Are you, you know, getting an adequate amount of time outside or playing your video games or grooming or watering your plants or listening to the music that you love? Are you getting enough time with animals? Are you getting enough time 
um, listening to music? Are you getting enough time creating art? Are you getting enough time um, cooking things with love and nourishment? Are you getting enough time under a hood of a car of something that you are working on or tinkering on? Are you getting enough time um, playing in the dirt of your garden if it's seasonally appropriate right now? And if not, how can you bring those hobbies inside this time of the year? How can you feed your mind? And the other piece is spiritual self-loving. You know, what are you doing to say your prayers, set your intentions, allowing yourself to feel that sense of connection with something that's greater than you? In what ways are you practicing that or neglecting it right now? And there are so many ways to do this. Are you going to your church if that's what calls to you? Are you writing down in your journal? Are you connecting with other people in your community who share a collective vision for something that you would like to see grow? Maybe it's a community project. Maybe it's um, helping out a cause that you find very valuable. Maybe it's going to a circle of women and being able to embrace and talk about your femininity in a certain way. But what is that higher piece of yourself that, that makes you feel connected to the world and the universe at large? Is it God? Is it Allah? Is it um, who, who is your, your higher power? And how can you connect more dearly to that? What are your spiritual practices? Again, are you praying? Are you meditating? Are you pulling cards? But just know that whatever that is, it's important for your heart. It's important to take care of yourself and to engage in those self-love and practices um, on a daily basis if you can. If not, just set at least a little bit of time once a week and, and connect to that. If it's 30 seconds a day, taking time to be able to appreciate a little piece of nature outside. All of these are sometimes the simplest ways are the best ways to engage your, your spirituality. But know what that's like and be aware of the self-love and practices that you can use to make your life more rich, more meaningful, and that can really serve in the rhythm of your heart. So that's a little bit about self-love. And the first step is to just acknowledge where you're at and what you're currently um, practicing and what you're currently bringing into your heart space. Just acknowledging the rhythm of your heart is important and what you are currently bringing to the table and all the realms of mind, body, and spirit. What are you doing to feed your heart? So the next piece of acknowledgement when we're exploring the, the harmony of our hearts is um, what, we're, what we're exposing it to. So in our everyday lives, we talk about detoxing and we understand on a basic foundational level that if you eat foods that, um, that don't serve you, you have a huge, you, you feel it in your body. We all know if we eat too much of a certain thing that might be one of our food vices, then we have an impact in our physical self the, the next day or the next few hours or maybe in the next few minutes, depending on the severity of your sensitivity to whatever, whatever that is that you ate. Um, we can certainly understand that in a big like holiday meal in the U.S. here on Thanksgiving, a lot of people talk about, you know, their post-turkey hangover. We all eat so much and turkey has tryptophan, which makes you exhausted and sleepy. I don't eat turkey personally, and I'm not 
advocating for <laughs> eating too much turkey or too much of anything really. But from a basic level, this understanding of, of eating too much of something or consuming too much of something that isn't healthy for us brings up a toxic level of it in our bodies. And it might cause sleepiness or lethargy. It might cause us to have aches or pains in our joints. It might cause us to be mentally too slow. It might cause some inflammation in our body that creates just a sense of tenderness, a sense of irritability. It might um, cause us to feel you know, physically or even mentally irritable. Um, and what we want to do is be able to feed our bodies so that our, our hearts can work at an optimal level so that we can call in things that that are good for us and that serve us and that make us feel like radiant human beings. We all deserve to be radiant, flowing, free human beings here on this planet. We're not here to suffer. Yes, it's a condition or it's a symptom of the human conditioning, um, but what we are here to do is to live in our higher power and anything that we can do to contribute to living a more full, more flowing and more free life is important for us to examine. So let's start by kind of finding ways that we can clear and make space for more goodness, more wholeness, more compassion, more love, more empathy, more generosity, more abundance, more prosperity, more friendship, more love, more passion, more connection, more tenderness, more radiance, more flow, more balance, more ritual, more health, more shine, more glitter, more glamour, more magic. Whatever it is for you, that you desire in your life. The whole point of this podcast is to open up little doorways and see if you can find more light to shine through on your healing process. And we kind of do this a little bit through rhythm and sound. So in, um, in music, we know that there's this thing called dissonance. And dissonance is something that happens that's outside of the inherent structure of what you're listening to. So if you have something kind of sweet and flowing and nice that um, that comes along and you're living your life, dissonance is very much like stress. So then you have like something like a... That, that doesn't sound so bad. So dissonance is something that kind of happens out of the normal and it causes a little stress. It causes us a tense re reaction in our bodies. And if we take away that dissonance in life, if we take away that dissonance in the music, then we've got more harmony. And that's what... Life is the art of perfecting our ability to recognize that dissonance and to recognize what isn't serving us. Because that dissonance can be toxic. So when we have the diagnosis of cancer in our lives, then there is some sort of a toxic cell regeneration in our body that needs to be taken care of before it takes over. And the same thing can happen with stress. Stress can compile and compile in our body. We stress is not just an emotional state that we all experience. Yes, it's something that we are going to experience from day to day, of course, but stress really can have a profound impact on our chemical selves and on our physical selves and on our emotional selves. So, and it impacts things over the long term, like your cardiovascular system, like your heart, like your lungs and your respiratory system. It can impact our immune system. It can impact our mental health. It can impact the rate of inflammation in our bodies, which has big 
it impacts on things like arthritis or Alzheimer's. When people with Alzheimer's get more stress, they their symptoms exacerbate. So we can take a lesson from those old elders and see the impact that it has on our body and our mind and our spirit. And we can try our very best to kind of reduce that dissonance, that disharmony in our lives. So the first step, I mentioned diet a few times, and although that's outside of my scope of practice as a music therapist, it's something that I know as a health practitioner that really, and, and a personal um, person here who is living in a human body, I know how much it impacts my well-being. And I think it's something that's relatable to, to everyone. But also, on a side note, I don't know if I recorded it in the intro, um, this is not a substitute for music therapy or therapy in general. These are just some, uh, this is a a share of me offering my insights and reflections from what I've learned along the years and hope that you're able to glimmer some light. And of course, if anything resonates with you deeply, please feel free to seek out a music therapist or a nutritionist to help you find a greater insight into foods or things that might work with your body in this case. And if you're looking to explore the music in you, definitely find a local music therapist to help you process some things or any kind of mental health therapist to help you talk through things. You know, not everyone works best through music, but a lot of people do. Anyway, um, so uh, dissonance. We've got dis dissonance in our bodies when we eat the wrong things. That's a basic thing. You know, we can have um, dissonance in our body if we are succumbed to an injury or an illness. Then, of course, we go to a medical professional and we seek treatment for that. Um, we can have dissonance in our environment if we live in an unsafe housing situation, right? Um, I work with a lot of patients in Bridgeport, Connecticut, that it's a very um, low income type of, of area and there's a lot of poverty there and there's, there's a lot of suffering and um, I hear many, many stories about people who are in unsafe living environments um, that we definitely need some more housing support that's safe and that's clean in that area to help people rise because if you've ever been in a situation where you've been in a messy environment, if you've been in an environment that's uncared for, um, you know, imagine being assigned to an apartment building that when you walk in, the foyer has glass shattered all over the place and it has fecal matter on the floor from people not picking up from their dogs and maybe the landscaping is astray and maybe there's strewn plastic bags everywhere and the dirt has blown inside if that is your entrance every day for your life it's going to have a really big impact on the way that you perceive yourself and what you're worthy and capable and valuable of like what your worth is if you are assigned to an environment like that and you don't have the resources, maybe you're physically ill and don't have, or are consistently in and out of the hospital and you don't have the ability to reach any higher and you're reliant on public assistance. But on a very basic level, in your own environment, if you look around your house, we have this beautiful Marie Kondo influence now, but look around your house and notice what inspires you? Are you inspired by things? Do they raise your energy? If you were to look at things on your wall, do they make the rhythm of your heart increase? Do they make you breathless for a moment? The rhythm of your body, notice the rhythm of your body. If you were to close your eyes or if you were to, if you're clo to close your eyes and imagine yourself in your living environment or if you take a walk through your living environment, notice what makes you hold your breath. What makes you light up? 
Or what makes you feel afraid? What makes you feel uninspired? If you look at the paintings or the art on your wall, does something make you go, uck? You know, or does it make you feel like, wow, this is such a beautiful representation of what I want to surround myself in? Is it, is, is what you're surrounding yourself in, is there enough space? Are you cluttered from floor to ceiling? Or is there too much space? Is there nothing on your walls? Is it completely bare? And if there's if if there's something that's uninspired inspired inspiring to you, then bring it to the thrift store and allow someone to have that inspiration. Or bring it to gift it to someone who you know would be inspired by it. Or toss it out. Or if you knew that it brought you light in another area of your life, maybe you toss it in storage and wait for that time in your life to reemerge. Sometimes things around us can remind us of people in a painful way. Maybe it's somebody who we've just lost. Maybe it's somebody that we um, are regaining or something that reminds us of somebody that wasn't a healthy relationship in our lives. And maybe we need to tuck that thing away for a while. Maybe it's an instrument that we don't have time for right now because we've just started a new job. Maybe it's something that we wish that we had time for. And again, maybe it's time to tuck that thing away until we have more time. Or maybe it brings a sense of inspiration to you that, wow, I'd really like to pick that up again. And then we start to structure time. But I invite you to look around your living environment and to detox what is not serving you and your heart's rhythm. And a good way to judge that is just to put your hand on your heart and to feel your breath and to feel your heart. No, learn to determine what is the rhythm of your inspiration and what is the rhythm of your passion and what is the rhythm of your hesitance and what is the rhythm of your discontent. I invite you to take a moment and just explore what that feels like in your heart's rhythm. So there's the sense of detoxing our diet, detoxing things in our environment. And another important piece that I want to talk about, um, oh, two important pieces, I guess. Um, there's people and the media as well. These are two important things. So all of these things can be put into a category of um, things that we are taking in in everyday life. Food's an easy one because there's this beautiful saying, I don't even know where it came from, but you are what you eat. And it's so true. If you eat too much sugar, you can feel it in your body, especially the older you get. Um, and you can just, you can feel that shift. You can see it in children when they have so much sugar. There's like this placebo that they get really ha happy and hyper energetic. Um, and then there's another place where, um, you know, you, you eat junk food and you don't feel so great. Um, but, uh, the environment is another place where you're consistently taking things in, you know, a, maybe another good example is in your kitchen. If your kitchen is really dirty and you're cooking from counters that are caked in, in, um, coffee stains or sugar spills or leftovers and this is what you are the surface space that you're using to prepare your nurturance 
from and you're you're taking in that so that when you're eating you're taking in the vision of these spills and there's very much a strong energy that um and a sound, strong message that you're sending to your body that you're not sending your body all of the um the space that it might need to honor this food that you're taking in you know there's um there's there's a big there's a big piece that you're taking in if your environment is dirty if your environment is cluttered if your environment is filled with things that aren't sparking that joy if your environment is filled with things that aren't bringing you that inspiration um and the same thing is with people um we all know that if we've been um around a really difficult coworker all day who is in a consistently negative space and maybe they're saying bad things about or negative things or just putting down stuff and they have that kind of low energy it's very difficult to um to tolerate that it's very difficult we end up picking up that energy around us and it's very very difficult to do this in our personal life because maybe there are families that we are um that we are experiencing difficulty with maybe there are friends that we're experiencing difficulty with and and it's important to really take a strong look at who is a safe person for us in our life you know safe as far as being able to serve our mind body or soul um and who is respectful who brings you kindness and who brings you love being aware of of the roles that people play in your life and the goodness that they bring to your to your life and to your heart space and um to your everyday experience the kindness that they offer the nurturance that they might offer but being really truthful with who you spend your time with is very important for your heart rhythm again we want to surround ourselves with nurturing uplifting people um i've had a patient who has come in and out of the hospital several times who one day kind of woke up and they looked at me and they said you know i have a really bad group of friends that i hang out with and they're not helping me live my best life they are robbing stores and carrying around guns and they're just not good people and i really desire to have people in my life that look out for me and i don't want to be there anymore because i have a family to support now so that's a really incredible story of somebody waking up to their truth and realizing that they are surrounded in their environment and in their friend circle by people who are very very unhealthy for them but even on small right microscopic or macroscopic levels just be aware of the people in your life and who is helping you live your best life and if we're surrounded by people who who aren't healthy that's something to be aware of and to honor and to own and to make space for in your life if people aren't serving you. And I'm sure that there are so many more categories I can probably go on talking about um different layers of toxicity in our everyday life for a while, but the last piece that is really really important um to me as a music therapist is um the media that we're taking in. Um from from the videos that we see and the movies that we watch and the TV programs that we watch and especially the music. Um so I'm totally guilty of this, but there are so many times in life where we hop in the car and we turn on to the popular radio station or maybe we have the radio running in the background as we're talking to friends or as we're cooking food or as we're cleaning the house and we don't take time to pull in those messages. because the things that we watch and the things that we take in visually in the media will impact 
our subconscious awareness. It will reinforce our belief systems. It will help us gain tolerance for things that maybe aren't in our best interests. Now, there is no research to support this phenomena happening in music therapy. There is lots of research out there that shows that metal music and rap music will not contribute to violence. They do not impact violent behavior. They do not impact aggression. Um, but that's also to say that rap music and metal music and all kinds of music, there are lots of sub subgenres and there are lots of really conscious artists out there of every genre. So I'm not saying one type of music is better or worse than another. But what I am saying is to make yourself more aware of the messages that you're receiving in sound. It's important for us to take accountability for what we're calling in. And when we're listening to music and we're listening to people degrade women, and we're listening to people talk about popping people or talk about stealing things or talking about um, these grandiose, oh, I made a zillion dollars um, or things that maybe are unachievable, you know, or maybe they're using their zillion dollars in unethical ways. Um, you know, I, I think of the song, you know, from Lord will never be royals and she talks about just kind of living a simple life and like how these people talk about all these grandiose things in um in in the music and she's like it's it's so unrelatable and i'm not saying maybe to find completely re relatable things all the time because it's nice to imagine it's nice to dream and it's nice to use that as a man use music as a manifesting tool but be really aware of the music that you listen to because it will impact your beliefs. Be aware of the type of movies that you watch um, because you know, horror movies, thrillers, watching them consistently will A, create an increase in adrenaline and stress hormone cortisol in our body and B, will desensitize us to all of the other shit that's going on in the world. It will desensitize us to um, to, to, to the murder, to the genocides that are going on, to the entrapment of people, um, and the dehumanization of different, different people that we're experiencing here in the United States of America. You know, when we can turn on a movie and see people completely be sawed to bits and pieces, then of course, if we see a bunch of people like living in cages and you're used to being exposed to a culture where it's okay to watch movies of people being torn to bits for entertainment, then of course people living in cages and kind of being fed minimally and sparsely isn't really such a big deal if you come from the perspective of being fed all of these really grotesque pieces in, in, in movies. It's almost like we are being desensitized to violence. The same thing with some of the music that's out there. There's some really beautiful conscious music, but some of the things that are being played on the radio are so monotonous, are, can be so monotonous, can be so unconscious, and definitely, you know, the People who choose music to be on these programs aren't out. They're not there to enlighten us. They're not there. They're not in the business to make us better people. They're not in the business to um, help brighten the world, although I wish that they would be. But they're in the business of finding a hot beat that they can sell, something that's new and spicy and has like really beautiful production quality and maybe something that distracts us from our everyday life and is over sexualized or over sensualized or um is just grandiose and about money and riches and not necessarily about our everyday life and that says something about our culture that says so much about our ability to overlook and to not 
value the self-examination that comes with being able to explore what is this music about? So I invite you the next time you listen to any piece of music, anything that comes up on your random phone, anything that comes up on the radio, press pause or turn down the volume for a moment and notice the rhythm of your heart. Okay, maybe it's synced along with the really hot beat that's going on, but notice the lyrics. If you don't know them, pull over, Google the song. Lyrics are easy if you just type in song lyrics and then write the word lyrics and then press go, then or return or enter or whatever, then it, the lyrics will appear for you there magically and really take in what is this about? And questions to ask yourself are, is this, what is this music teaching me? What belief is this music instilling in me? What value does this music hold in my life? And the same thing with mo movies. What, is, what belief is this um, serving? What is this teaching me? What is this movie teaching me? We only have a short bit of time here on this planet. And it's important to recognize that we're all here for a reason. We've all had that itch, that yearning of what is life or what I'm doing here? What am I doing here? And, and our culture is very much set up so that we're kind of in struggle mode. We all go to work from nine to five every day to pay the bills so we can get the rent paid or our kids taken care of or do the things that need to be due on a basic level. And we've all seen, or most of us have seen the infographics that um, correlate, you know, the cost of living and minimum wage to like how much it costs to um, go to college. You know, back in the 70s, then you were able to afford college on a minimum wage job. And you can afford to pay it off. And now we see that even just to make the cost of living these days, um, we need, in most major cities, you need like three part-time or three full-time jobs at a minimum wage just in order to be able to make the basic living expenses of living in major cities. So there's a huge discrepancy in and what we're able to really process in everyday life if we're working our asses off and we're working to just survive here in this country. It takes so much just to survive that when we are offered these beautiful, tasty treats of free music on the radio, the question to ask yourself is, is this freeing? Or is there a cost to listening to this as well? Is it creating freedom in your heart space? Is it creating freedom in your, in your soul? Or is it creating closure? Is it creating closure to the freedom of women, um, freedom of choice, freedom of, um, of, our, of our bodies? Is it creating freedom of our ability to believe whatever it is we need to believe or whatever it is we choose to believe that's in our, our highest interest? Is it creating freedom of our minds? Is it giving us new ideas to expand, you know, what life could possibly be like? Is it holding us in a po poverty mentality? But whatever it is that you are, whatever way are you, are you seeking freedom in your beliefs? Is are you seeking, seeking freedom in your soul? Or are you seeking freedom in, um, just exploring other options and ways of being and ways of living. The way to seek freedom is limitless. And if we don't have the freedom of our rhythm, and we're being held in this constriction of belief and things that are, that are making us play small, you know, whether it be those images of violence that we see on the television, whether it's violence in song lyrics, whether it's um, song lyrics that make us feel sad, too. So many people that I see um, 
I guess to, to clarify, in the hospital, I work in acute psychiatry. And I get a lot of people who come in who have hit rock bottom, who have um, severe depression because of the life circumstances they've been through. And I can't help but recognize every day that I'm maybe two or three steps away from being where they are. If certain events in my life were to align, I could easily be them at rock bottom. And you, the listener, could easily be them as well. And I'm sure we can all think of times in our lives where we felt that sense of rock bottom. We are human beings and we are not immune to depression and sadness. So one of the common things that I see in these patients, too, is that um, is that they often listen to music that validates their emotions and that validates their feelings of sadness and their feelings of helplessness and their feelings of hopelessness. It validates and in that in those rhythms, in that music, if we think of like the saddest song that we've ever heard that has just helped us cry when we need that release, it's so important to have that music that helps us release our emotions and um, gives us a sense that we're not alone in our sadness. Think of that time in your life where you felt sad. Think of that song that brought you such a feeling of, oh my God, I am not the only one to have ever experienced this. Such a fucking gift. But it's when you listen to that song or those songs over and over and over. And in life, when we practice things over and over and over, they become stronger pieces of who we are. So if we're listening to that song every day, if we're waking up and hearing it, then we're practicing that sadness. And we become really good at that sadness, and the sadness becomes depression. Because instead of exploring those feelings that are keeping us in that space of sadness, we find ways to hold on to them. So that we don't lose whatever it is that we're sad about. So it's important to free ourselves of that rhythm and to let it go. Or even better than letting it go, integrating it into who we are and helping to weave it into a new rhythm. You can always have that rhythm. You can always have that piece of loss, that piece of sadness there with you. But there comes a time to transform. And there comes a time to turn it into a new rhythm in our lives. So. My favorite part of today. Calling in. So I created a little song um song called calling in and i talk about things that i want to call in once we make space for um for the release of these things once we can uh draw attention to things that aren't serving us and that aren't um oh gosh bringing us to a higher space in life that aren't making us feel more gratitude, that aren't making us feel more love, that aren't making us feel more compassion, that aren't like filling our life with a sense of litness and fire and passion and goodness, then we can we can get, get, get rid of those because there's so much to be thankful for and appreciate and there's so much to live. There's so much to live for. So um, when we're calling on things, we're... We're making space to receive them. Um, and you are what you receive. So I'm going to play the song for you right now. And it talks about how I'm um, calling in love. How I'm calling in joy. Um, I forgot what else I'm calling on in, in the song. It's been a little while since I recorded it. But um, I would invite you to fill in the line, I'm calling in 
blank. So what are you calling in? And what do you want to feel when you call that in? How do you want that thing to make you feel? And how, um, what, what do you want to, what do you want to create when you feel that in? I think my, my song goes, um, feel it in my mind, my body and heart, my soul, um, and this process of embracing whatever it is that's transpiring when we when we clear space in our life it can be kind of scary sometimes um, I'm not a stranger to that that we hold on to things because they're familiar and they make us feel safe and it's like a good song you know there's like some informal study that came out that said that people who are in their 30s stop listening to new music most of people in, the, in their 30s, they develop a family, they're busy with their careers, and you kind of like develop this sense of like complacency and like contentment in your life. And, you know, pulling in new things can kind of be scary and maybe we're not used to those and maybe we like the pattern and the consistency of everyday life. So when we call in new things, it can be kind of scary because we don't know what the fuck is going to happen, right? If I become a more loving person, 
and my behavior starts to shift because of that, then what will my loved ones think? You know, if my, if I, um, or, um, what will my coworkers feel like you kind of start integrating yourself and you become a new person when you call in these positive things, right? You might be more full of gratitude, more full of joy. But allow yourself that space to embrace whatever you become. Because the most important thing for you to do while you are here on this planet is to embrace the rhythm of life and the harmony of your heart space so that you can contribute to this world in a place that brings more harmony and more alignment and more heart to the human race. And the best way to do that is to bring your gifts forth. And that's really what heart harmony is about. Is finding a place where your contentment flows from the center of your heart and out to the world around you. We are all here with really special gifts. No two of us is the same. And no two of us will do things the same way. So it's important to touch base with your rhythm, to learn about the rhythm of your heart, to explore it, to never stop listening to it, to find ways that it likes to be expressed, to find ways that it likes to be explored. Because then you can learn about the gifts that it offers with its rhythm and with its sound. And you can bring that out into the world around you. So please, loves, listen to your heart. Listen to your heart's rhythm and learn the medicine that it needs. Allow yourself to clear, 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 clear the way for you to call in the magic of everyday life that you desire to fill your heart with and to fill your body with and to fill your soul with so that you can live at your maximum potential. When you are your happiest, most joyous space in life, then you can really, really thrive and help others thrive around you. There's a beautiful saying that without mental health, there is no health. So I encourage you all today to explore your mental health, to explore your heart. And maybe we'll end this with another heart-based practice. We can begin to see things from a more heart-centered space by using our heart as a breathing point. So when you take a deep breath in, imagine the air filtering in through the space around your heart. And as you exhale, imagine the air flowing through the space in the center of your heart. So that's an inhale with the air shining through the space around your heart. Imagine it just filling with the radiant energy of your heart as you're taking everything in, letting it 
fill the area around your heart. And as you exhale, allow all of that stimuli around you, all of that information that you're taking in to just stream through like a bright beacon of light through your heart. And when you breathe in, open your eyes and take in the sights around you and let that seep in through the area around your heart, taking in whatever environment you're in. And then as you exhale, exhale a sense of love into the things around you and let that love stream through your heart space projecting your love or maybe you want to call it kindness maybe you want to call it goodness letting your positivity just shine through that heart space and on your next inhale shine in and allow yourself to take in things with a deeper sense of love into that heart space and as you exhale allow yourself to kind of recycle that appreciation and that gratitude for whatever you're taking in to the outside world around you Filling in the cycle of bringing in that love, of bringing in that gratitude and exhaling that gratitude of your heart space to everything around. And close your eyes for a moment, rest your hands on your heart and just notice how delicate that process feels. Notice if it shifts your perspective at all. To breathe through the center of your heart space. Notice how it might soften you. How it might help you find the beauty in the world around you a little more closely. I know for me it does, and for you it might not, and that's okay. Not everything I share is everyone's cup of tea, but I appreciate all of you listening if you made it this far. So loves, breathe through your heart. Listen through your heart. Listen to your heart. Detoxify your heart. Call in through your heart. Your heart is such an important sensory organ. As one of my favorite meditation teachers will say, let your heart be your primary sensory organ. And allow yourself to live life more fully through it. As when you do that, you teach others to do the same. So thank you again for listening. Please know that these podcasts are offered at this point in time for free. Uh, Part of the reason why I have not um, offered a share yet this year is just because of my my energy levels from (laughs) this dark season, Um, but also because I've had an abundance of work. Um, I would like to add these shares as part of my... Um, a a more consistent offering if you felt as though this helped you today you can go over to my website if you'd like to make a financial contribution to um, www.thesoundofwishes.com and there's a tip cup up on the upper uh, menu bar or pull down menu if you're on a smartphone or a tablet but if you'd like to make a donation um, if this helped you today any little bit um, counts and will kind of help me be able to dedicate more time to this and to uh, to share share the benefits. Um, also, if this helped you, another big, big uh, help would be to go over to iTunes or um, wherever you are listening to this and offer a five-star review if this helped you. Any feedback that you can offer would be helpful. And I am available for music therapy and heart-centered music workshops as well. I am a board-certified music therapist and offer a variety of workshops. And I'll have some more concrete offerings up on my website soon. Also, please feel free to 
join me at on Instagram at The Sound of Wishes. I'm also on Facebook at The Sound of Wishes. And again, thanks for tuning in and listening to this podcast. Feel free to reach out and let me know if there's anything that you'd like to hear next. Thank you, loves. Thank you, wishes. And I wish you all the beauty in your heart space that you may flourish and be the most radiant, beautiful versions of yourselves that you can. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Sound of Wishes podcast. Once again, I'm Cassandra Mulcahy, editor, creatress, and producer at the Sound of Wishes podcast. For more information about us and our projects, please visit thesoundofwishes.com and follow us on Instagram as well as Facebook at the Sound of Wishes. To support the Sound of Wishes, please consider signing up for our newsletter, subscribing to our podcast, and leaving us a five-star review if you found this episode helpful. It helps people find us, and your support will be returned with oodles of gratitude. Thank you so much for tuning in to Tune Up. I love you, I'm grateful for you, and I'm glad that we are alive on this planet here in this moment of time. Be well, wishes.